Hello. Good day, good day, good day. Please How tell you me you can hear me. Loud and well. clear, P. You can hear me loud and clear, right? Good, good. Yeah, I can hear. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I got these other headphones on. I've been having technical issues. So I'm glad that you can hear me. Twink. The real deal versus how you feel. We need a theme song. I know, right? Definitely a, a little intro. <laughs> something, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Right before we get the show started, a little something, something. But how's your hump day going? It's, today is Wednesday, almost at the end wow. of the week. I'm still trying to get over the hump. <laughs> I'm trying to get over this hump, okay? Okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. And and I mean I I believe earlier we discussed that you have great weather seven degrees right in Jersey right that's why I'm outside with the sunroof okay, open okay. Hey, nothing wrong I'm with anemic that. so I'm a- that all I have is the sunroof open though I can't play the game I have the windows down and so and I can't do all that cold but I got the sunroof open and um, okay. I still got the heat on though oh <laughs> still got the heat on. Oh man, mm-hmm. you got it real bad. You you need to have some iron pills or whatever too. On top of that, yeah, I do. I have iron pills. You know, I always oh, take man. them and stop them because you know they cause other issues. But yeah, you know, <laughs> no judgment. <laughs> well, we no just appreciate the people who came in. You know, who who uh, you know, what I'm saying, took the shoes off and show a little bit of love when you came in here. We appreciate that. If once again, this is the real deal versus how you feel. And this yes, is a we, love the, we love the love. Yes. This conversation today is kind of a part two that we had on Monday. So you've been rocking with us. This is, uh, you know, a continuation from part one, which was, you know, when is the right time or do we teach our young girls about changing diapers? And now we're going to talk about the young boys, young, you know, little baby boys, right? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we got to keep that same energy both ways, right? It can't be one-sided. Or can it? Y'all know Twins Inc. came in hot on Monday. I just want to refresh everyone. Again, shout out to the listeners. This your girl, Miss I Speak Life. Twins Inc. came in hot and heavy on Monday. Like, uh-uh. Here's, this, here's the run. This is what we're not going to do. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm interested. I'm interested to see if it'll be that same energy when it comes for the young boys, because a lot of times we hear, you know, boys get passes for certain things. So we'll we'll see how the conversation goes. Right, and for some young, you want to get into it? Yeah, we can get right to it. You know, once again, the, the main topic here today is: Do we teach young boys as well about changing diapers? at a young age, so from 10 age, you know, 10 years old, whatever the case may be. But are we proactively out there teaching young little boys how to change boy diapers or girl diapers? Or neither? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so and when she said I came in hot and heavy on uh, Monday, it's because I have a, a nine-year-old, sorry, she's eight years old right now. She'll be nine in July. And I walked into a situation where she was actually changing the diaper of a little boy, a baby boy. And this is how the whole conversation started. So that was part one. So if you want to know what, what we just say on that, just go and, you know, follow us and go to, you know, Monday's episode is there about an hour long. We get right to it. It's not too long, but right to the point. So but, for me, off the back, I'm, I'm sorry, were you about to say something else? No, no, no. You good. Go ahead. Okay, so, because I know you're about to come hot. So, I figured, let me go ahead and say my two cents fuel topic so that, you know, twins can just take over from, from there, right? <laughs> um, for me, do we, you, you said something really um, powerful when you said, are we, you know, purposely out here training our young boys before the age of 10 to change diapers? For me, it's an absolute no. It's a no. And I'm going to say that's a no, regardless of the circumstance. And I know it's tough, but, you know, the initial answer would be no. And then if something happened circumstantial that 
led to it, then we consider, you know, consider the circumstance. But the answer for me is no. You do not teach these young boys how to change diapers, especially not, no. To me, it's with the boys, it's a no, oh, no, 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 no. It's just a no. <laughs> not the same sex diapers, not the opposite sex diapers. Mm-mm. Yeah, I, I actually would have to agree um, that it, it for me as well will be a complete no across the board. There's too many things that a, a young boy needs to be focused on, and learning how to change a diaper is not on the top hundred list. You know, if there, even if there's a hundred list, whatever list there is, that it's it's gonna be the last thing. And the reason why I say that because I didn't really learn how to change a diaper until I had my daughter, and. It's an easy, quick learn, quick fix how to do. So it, it's not like you need practice on how to do this. It's really easy to do it. But I was at the age of 20. No, no, no. I had my first child at 30. So I was 30 years old when I actually learned how to change the diaper, especially my kid's diaper. So the age of 30 is when I learned how to change the diaper and it was an easy process. So, and I changed my daughter's first diaper and the wife didn't think I could do it. And it was a very easy process. So with, with that being said, no. It's not something that they need to, need to know how to do. But what little boys need to know how to do <laughs> is one of the tie their shoes and they brush their teeth. Heck, little nasty boy, because I'm a little nasty boy myself. Boys need to learn how to take showers and baths. Shoot. I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. When I was young, I don't know. Listen, when I think about it now, I'm like, what was I thinking? But when I was a little young boy, I used to hate taking showers. I don't understand why, but I used to hate taking showers. I actually would get in the shower, stand in there for about like just maybe, run? Let, the, let the water run, make it a little wet, maybe maybe playing a superhero game with the water run off my arm, but no time I grab any soap and piss up on me, right? And that's a little young boy tool. So with that being said, if I can't take a bath, right, properly, what, am I, what is my business or what is my end game of learning how to change a diaper, right? I can't even take care of myself. I'm going to take care of someone else, if that makes sense, right? Absolutely. And for me, it's a no for the boys, period. Like you said, when do you need to know? I mean, I I, I don't want to sound, you know, shady by saying this, but naturals are nurtured. So they they tend to learn, you know, they tend to go ahead and learn certain things, um, like domestic things before the boys. I get it. But and that's just overall, generally speaking. That's not how I did it in my home, but I do understand that that's a large part of, a part of the caution function under these pretenses. However, for me, I'm not letting the boys change the diapers for multiple reasons. Um, again, I don't care if it's the same sex. That's a no. Uh, you know, I don't care if it's the opposite. That's a no. That is just... I think the minds are stimulated differently from certain things where I talked about this before Monday, you know, where it is more like a task or duty or, you know, something like that for girls than it is, you know, um, and that's all girls. I'm just saying for the most, for the most part, when young girls have to learn how to change their homes, you know, it's because they're helping the mom, you know, or the parent over, you know, with the workload, with the the load in the home if that's not the case and you just proactively teaching you know a young girl or boy how to change a diaper I, I have an issue with that because I you know echo twins on that can they properly clean their self, themselves how are they going to clean someone else but I stand behind the no no for the boys it's just too many different signals I think that are a little different than girls right and also before we before you know we get too deep into it for people to, for people to try to say, well, my child not to clean themselves, which is good. That's good that they not clean themselves. But let's be let's be realistic here. At no point should a young boy be uh, changing a diaper. One, there's too many things out there that we already have to guard and watch our kids from being exposed to. Right? We got we got to monitor they their games, their video games, their cell phones on things they see on TV. We have to monitor those things because you don't want your kid being exposed to too many things, right, so early in a young age. Because if, if anyone has kids will understand this, when kids are young, they're soaking up everything that's being thrown at them, right? 
So that's the, the, those are the most important ages of grooming a young child, a boy or girl, to be a young adult and so on. But with that being said, no young boy should be, able, should be exposed to another man's private area. No young boy at a young age should be exposed to a woman's private area. Those things is going to happen, yes, but we're talking about eight, nine, seven, six, five. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, not, not those young ages. There's so many things they can work on to focus on. You know, kids, listen, I have a seven-year-old son right now, and we're focusing on, on this basic math. You know, if I ask him what's what's uh, what's twenty five plus zero, and he's sitting there thinking like, uh, uh, it's twenty five. But <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's so the, crazy. The, how frustrating it. It's right, so very spaces. frustrating. But then, but then we we talk about oh, he's he's learning how to change diaper. I'm ready to slap everybody in the whole house. Like, really, this is what we're doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> this is what we, this is what we teaching little boys at the time. I mean, can you teach them how to wash the dishes, take the trash out? I mean, heck, I hear a lot of stories of ladies, grown ladies, hearing about men who don't know how to take the trash out or got to be told to take the trash out, right? Let that marinate for a second. So um, boys not change, boys not change diaper, but don't know how to take the trash out. I find that's a problem right there, ladies what? and gentlemen. Go ahead, Miss Speak Life. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Repeat that again. All right, she might got a phone call, people. So we'll give her a second. Once again, this is the real deal. This is how you feel. When we're talking about young boys learning how to change a diaper, is it appropriate? Yes or no? And the question is, it's going to be no. I don't really see too many people really arguing this, but it's definitely a no. Because, like I said, there's so many things that they can learn as far as being young boys to be young men to get them to where they need to be. As a young yeah, boy. I... Go ahead. Go ahead. Welcome back. No, I, I didn't know you were going to keep going. Go ahead. Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I'll just tell them because, you know, I don't think you got a phone call or not. But um, once again, as a young boy, you know, you, you have to really, like, first off, I, we have a lot of emotional young men out here in the world right now. A lot of emotional young boys because they wasn't taught at a young age on how to manage their emotions, their feelings, when they lose a video game, when, they, when, they, when they're playing a game, playing with other kids, sharing those things. Those things that need to be taught in, at a young age so they don't grow up to be young, grown, sensitive men or emotional men who take rejection rule of bed and go from zero to 100. But if we're teaching them how to change diapers, what methods are you teaching them? It's like you te- you're raising a little boy to be more feminine, if, if anything. Mm-hmm. Like, there's, 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 like, there's nothing about changing a diaper at the age of seven that's going to like, oh, yeah, he's going to be a really good father when he gets older. Really? Is that what we basing it on? <laughs> Is that what we basing it on? And not just that, like, you know, when we think about it, we put, we, we're not looking at the fact that a lot of us have learned these things because of trauma. You know, it wasn't like we learned these things because they were positives and it was beneficial or necessary. We're now just reteaching, we're teaching our children based on something that was taught to us out of a different space that a lot of our children aren't living in. And sometimes people don't realize that, like, you know, that's like you're projecting where you were and what you have going on onto these kids. And they're not prepared in the same way that you were because their experiences are different. These kids are like in air bubbles a lot of times, you know, like you just mentioned, the boys being emotional and get losing their temper over games and stuff like what is wrong with you? You know, but that's a real thing. And that's what needs to be talked about, not changing a diaper. Right. And like you said earlier, there were these, these are some things that, you know, some people will say, well, when I was young, I had to do it. OK, I get it. You had to do it when you was young. But does it make it right? <laughs> does it make it right? I understand you had to do it you was growing up, but does it make it right? We're all about changing the narrative and, and changing how things go forward. So even though you had to do it, I'm sure when you was young, well, I'm sitting here, you probably don't remember. But anyway. In most cases, no no kid is running around talking about, oh, I want to change diapers. Oh, I want to take, I want to do this. No, they don't. They don't. They don't. That's not something the kids are coming out saying they want to do. They won't play right. video games all day. They won't go outside. They won't eat snacks all day. Changing a diaper is something that no kid volunteers to do. Now, a little girl, she may, depending if she has baby dolls, right, and they have that option, 
That's it. But right. guess what? When they're changing, when they have baby dolls, they're changing them. Guess what? The little baby girls are changing, which have the same pieces and parts that she had. She, you know, mm-hmm. what I'm saying she don't have baby boy dolls <laughs> that she's changing. Mm-hmm. No, it's baby girl dolls she has. And most boys, they have action figures. Simple as that. Spider Man, X Men, you know, all that. Black Panther. Go back to G.I. Joe's. Oh, G.I. Joe? Joe's. Yeah. G.I. Joe's, Ninja Turtles, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> there's nothing yeah. here to say, hey, would you go and change Batman's outfit? No, we're not doing that. Right, right. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, what, what, when you think about it, like when you seriously think about it, what do you feel the kids pull away from that? And that's why I made the point to say, you know, for girls, it's more of a duty. The energy behind it is different initially. You know, boys, if, you, if they are learning how to change diapers, it's more of an interest. Like, oh, you know, you're doing it because your sister's doing it. Or, you know, they're in that same space, like with your son. He just happened to be in that same space. But the exposure is still there. And for a lot of them, it's premature, you know. So then how do you decide to go after that? Do you double back and take the risk of really prematurely exposing them? Or do you take the risk and you're seeing if they forget about it or nothing happens? You know, because then that's that other part after after the fact. Yeah, because at that point now, I need to have a sit-down conversation with my son regardless the equipment that he has versus the equipment his sister doesn't have, right? See, with a girl, you know, for me, when I was going to engage her about the talk about adults and, you know, having the talk, you know, air quotes, the talk, I was going to wait until she had a cycle, right? So that so that, that lets you know when I can have a conversation with her. With the son, is different, right? To find out, you try to figure out where his mindset is at, if he's, if he's really thinking about girls like that. Because most boys, everyone know this, you know, we don't mature as quick as a woman, right? So our brains are still thinking about going outside, playing the dirt, bikes, video games. We ain't thinking about really girls until we get a little bit older, right? But now I got to need to sit there and have a conversation because he may not say nothing at that moment, but he may see something that it doesn't make sense to him, right? Like, okay, I see I got this. Why come she don't have that? And now is this that exposure? And now right. I got to make sure when I when I go on, on the internet, they're not looking stuff up on the young because that's what normally kids do. They'll go online, start looking at stuff, you know. And when I was young, <laughs> the thing of how young and dumb my friends were when we was growing up, you know what I'm saying? I was told at a young age, like, hey, if a girl's on top, she can't get pregnant. I'm like, how? Like, no one I know now, I'm like, oh, my God. There's people out there who actually believe that. And that's why some people had kids at a young young age because the education wasn't there. Misinformed. Mm-hmm. Misinformed because when I was told that information, I didn't go back home to my mom and dad and say, hey, dad, hey, mom. I was told that if a woman's on top when you're having this, they don't get pregnant. Mm-hmm. First of all, I, I done got slapped in my hand. Like, who are you talking to? And if you're talking to this person, you can't handle them no more. You can't go outside. What was you watching? So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You learn. Yeah, that, that would have opened a whole, a whole different type of energy from your parents. That's something exactly. these kids don't even understand either. You know, when I had to have the conversation with my daughter, it was, like you said, it was during her cycle. Once her cycle started, then it's, you know, hey, we have to talk about this. We have to make sure that you understand that you can make another little you one and you know there's a lot that goes into it but if you leave them unaware you know after they reach certain points and you give them the option to learn from these misinforming um places friends social media internet then you really leave them you know unprepared and uncovered because like you said people really were believing, hey, if she's on top, then you good. You know, she can't get pregnant. What? (laughs) So it's important that you develop that relationship. And I mean, we're talking about it just on the basis of changing a diaper. But the real part of this, when it comes to the solution and progression, is that we understand that conversations with our children need to be had. And We need to talk with one another in co-parenting and parenting our children so that we understand why we're not exposing them to certain things, even if that's what's in the world. We have to do those extra steps. Like you said, go on there, put the parental guidances up, whatever that looks like, you know, and make sure that you're doing your part to 
you know, and um, and to have the parental guidance and the governing. You know, a lot of parents just control. They want to control everything. They don't understand this parental guidance and governing. So, but we got a message. Did you have anything you wanted to say before I press play? No, you sound. Go ahead, press play. Okay, I'm press play. Yo, what's up, y'all? It's Tony the Tiger. Um, yeah, I was just breathing through, figured I'd stop, show some love to the folks, see what y'all got going on. As soon as I swiped over, I heard twins say, yeah, kids, you know, young, they was think about video games, playing in dirt and riding bikes and shit. It's, it's, it's some motherfuckers that's grown men who mind still on that shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I agree. I agree. Facts. Appreciate it, Tony the Tiger, man. man hey, love. Tony. That's true, because even when men get older, they go from riding bicycles to getting actual motorcycles <laughs> or dirt bikes, depending on what you do. But, but at the end of the day, once again... Yeah, like, and I, they sit I, in I, front I, of video games all day. The guys, you know, they still, yeah. they still have that sense of youth i think even that's one of the things i think with the guys that i have been with it was always that energy because with women for whatever reason the nurturing part it does tend to lead us to a more mature we feel responsible or overly responsible i speak for myself so it's a nice little balance that we provide for each other because you guys have that spirit like that free spirit thing and I like to tap mm-hmm. into that a lot. Me personally, I like that energy, that spontaneity and all of those things. And I think that's what men have a lot of that, you know, um, and it's not always because you're irresponsible. I think that's just part of the nature, right? It's right. when it's not guided properly and it's not instructed. And, you know, to Tony's point, yes, there are grown men still doing that. But do they have that balance that we're talking about, you know, making sure these kids have instead of just giving them information making sure they have a good balance and know when to use this information or you know when to expose them to this information and that balance is key right so like you said um grown men who play video games right so yeah Mm -hmm. um that's something they do at a young age and some do even when they get older actually i'm a gamer so i still play but um, those things need to be taught at a young age as far as priority and, you know, balance, right? So right. It, it, it goes back to the same topic. You're teaching a young boy how to change his diaper, but you're not teaching him how to be, you know, mature, how to make sure he, he deals with multi, multitasking, right? Priority, uh-huh. things that need, need, need to be done before you can sit there and play a game all day. Like, I teach my kids this. Okay, you right. want to play a video game? Cool. Okay, well, make sure we do, do you, first off, you can get up, make sure you clean your room, you know, say eat breakfast, do your schoolwork, and do it right. Not just do it, but do it right. And then once you complete all your schoolwork and you eat dinner, you know what I'm saying, and everything's you, you've been good, then at that time frame, you can play video games. You can't wake up and go straight to play video games because of how you feel. No. It's called priority. You have to earn these rights to do these things. Oh, and right, these, and, right. And these are things you need to really have focus before you, you even have, let's change your diaper. No. Kids, yes. Well, kids will always be around. Most, I get it. Most of the time, the kids are normally around the mother, right? If you have a little brother, little sister, or babysitting, whatever, kids, the, the kids are always around mom all day. It's, it's, it's a fact, okay? It is what it is. Cool. They can hand mommy a diaper, hand mommy a wipe, but at that point, turn your head, go to the other room, and I'll call you when it's come back. Like, that's, it really comes down to parenting at the end of the day. Because yeah, we always win I'm, right there. Yeah, at the end of the day, it comes down to parody. I mean, the kids going to do whatever because they don't know. The kids don't know any better, right? But it's up to us, the parents, that really need to think about what we're exposing our kids to, you know? You may think it's harmless, but it's like, no, that's it, it makes no sense. Um, did you really think about it? Just because you might have did it in Yuzhang does not make it right. No right. way, shape, and form that it makes it right. Right, and that's what you should be looking into. Like, when there's certain things, like, is this we need to do that as parents, period. Like, when we are training our kids, especially with um, deciding whether to homeschool or not, we really need to get into the pros and cons of some of these things because, you know, homeschooling, I support 110,000%, but a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't like that thought because it's like, oh, then I'm going to be, you know, stuck doing this, so I'm going to have to do that, or it's going to be 
difficult. I'm, you know, but we're with our children all day, every day now. Yeah, yeah, we are. And I understand because of the pandemic out there now, but right, that, you know, saying you don't want to see kids at school. I mean, the reason why I don't see my kids at school because, you know, um, some, you know, I get it. Um, majority, when it comes to the pandemic, the kids are not really getting sick, but the problem is they may be exposed to it and they bring it back home and mom, dad, grandma, the parents usually catch it and then that can happen, right? So that's probably one of the main reasons why. Because think about this. My kids has been going virtual school for over, well, is it March? Yeah, it's over a year, exactly a year now, right? And my kids, and this, and my kids, like I said, eight and seven years old, this is the first time in their life in a whole year they did not get sick since they've been home. I mean, that's no runny nose, no coughing, no sneezing, none of this, none of this for a whole year have not been sick. And if anyone who has kids can relate to this, when you have kids and you send them to school, it's like every other week they get sick. No, you every ain't telling no lie. Not, but they're not exposed to all different types of, you know, kids, bacteria. They're, you know, in the house. Mm -hmm. So it's the best place for them, if you ask me. Right. And then on top of that, you can control the content that they're learning, right? For, you know, like for instance, um, it was past Martin Luther King Jr. this past, right? And you know, the school has a version, but at that point, once they get past the school version, you can touch them. You can actually teach them the real version of what really happened and what happened. You know, it's crazy because, um, if not, yeah, if not, um, because yeah, it was off Monday, Tuesday. My, uh, my wife was uh, teaching the kids or doing virtual learning, and they're talking about Christopher Columbus. How disrespectful is that? I'm not trying to change the subject, but the fact, the point they're trying to make is that we're after talking about Martin King Jr. and had a day off come Tuesday. They're talking about Christopher Columbus. Really? So I told my kids, like, okay, he's X Y Z. I didn't but know they still talked really about that. Period. Oh yeah, yeah. They they still talk about that fool. And like I said, this that's not even his month, not even his day, not even nothing. How we get to that? But yes, that was a topic they brought up, and that's. And I get it. They did that for a reason. I understand they had an agenda behind it. So, I, you know, I can't control it, but what I can control is what they really know. So I definitely had to educate the kids that, nah, he wasn't the first person here. It was Indians, and, you know, we'll go from there. But, but once again, that is one of the great topics of or great benefits of being homeschooling. You know, you create your own schedule. You create, you can teach them about real-life stuff that we didn't learn in school. You teach about money, you know, credit stocks, bonds, all these things that you don't learn in school because they don't, school don't teach you how to be an adult. They teach you how to work for somebody. They don't teach you how to be your own individual. Yep, and that's just facts on that. And unfortunately, you know, they make it so we seem, it seems so overwhelming for us to take on that position and actually homeschool our kids. I know I did it for mine too when they were younger. And part of me wish I would have continued, but I know the fear they put in me, you know, when I was, you know, trying to make those decisions, you know, but we have to do more changing the narrative and just putting the information out there that homeschooling is the way, you know, changing diapers before 10, year old, 10 years old is not the way, <laughs> you know, like change some of our perspective a lot because we have to get out of the, get out of custom of just doing things that are just not helpful for us you know us as a people right. us as a community not us individually that's the second thing like we always on the individual journey it's me and my life and, right you know correct 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 We're speaking out to the masses because once again if you've been following us you understand the real deal versus how you feel we're sleuth driven um you know process position and you know change the narrative to try to come to solutions when we speak about things you know this may not be a big thing to a lot of people out there because a lot of people don't have kids, you know, at this moment. But it's something to think about if you do have nieces and nephews and all that stuff. Because you may not have kids of your own, but you may be exposed around other people who have kids. And you might be in a situation where somebody got a diaper change and whatever. These are just something that you, you should be mindful of what you're doing when you're doing it. Because it, it has long-lasting uh, implications. Absolutely. Well, twins, we having a low day. I can see that, you know, we um, usually have more interaction than listeners and everything like that. But I think yeah, that yeah. the topic lends to, like you said, going into changing the narrative and making 
better decisions as parents, uh, first and foremost, and then moving, you know, pushing the narrative forward. But I agree with you 110%. No, no, no. The boys should not be changing diapers, period. I have a little bit more leniency if the girls do. But me personally, I say it's a no across the board for the boys again. And that's just my take on that. Oh, yeah, 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 I agree. I, I, I'm, I'm in agreement with you, two thousand percent. And you know, and I get it. You know, there's this not a topic that's going to be like people want to talk about because it's not something ratchet or something that's, you know, uh, you know, you, you know, the topics be out there that, that trigger people. So, but once again, right, it's not that's not what we do, right? But that's not what we do. We, we don't try to talk. To, we don't try to have conversation that's going to be triggering or, you know, that's popping or whatever. We just have to have real life conversation and change, change the narrative because. I think all of us at one point has been exposed to something like this. And it, even though we, we might have did it, it doesn't make it right. So I have two little kids. I'm working on those things. So we, I'm trying to change the narrative. And, you know, and maybe any person out there who may be listening to the future that may be a future dad or future mom, they may know what things to do and not to do, you know, because knowledge is key. You know, some things people don't know because of the lack of education. But that's what we have today. Like I said, I'm not going to keep beating your head anymore what it is. The, the hard answer is a hell to the no, 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 no. No, 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 no. no. I'm going to echo that. <laughs> but that's all I have for you today, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we don't have much more, but it was something, like I said, to definitely discuss because I know, I knew it was going to be a difference for me. And a lot of times we leave the boys out for whatever reason. We don't even mention, you know, it's just like, oh, you know, boys to get over it. We put so much on it. It's weird, but I'm glad we were able to discuss it and get, you know, get to the same solution space, the consensus, and get back to parenting, guys. You know, not right. just babysitting your children. <laughs> well, we appreciate it. So, ladies and gentlemen, check us back. We'll be back on Friday, 3 p.m., with another topic. Um, on Fridays, we may do a double. <laughs> Friday's been kind of like a a hot day for us so we might be back again on friday two times but if you do but you can't follow us on ig the real difference is how you feel if you have any topics that you want us to chop up or talk about it's the same thing the real difference is how you feel at gmail and also yeah should i tell them what the next topic is going to be you sure can uh yeah so i'll just go ahead and so uh on friday we are talking about can mm, 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 mm. Can you be straight if you like trans or hairy and masculine women? Can you be considered straight? So I'll say it again without laughing. Hold on. Let me get my life together. Okay. So we're okay. talking about can you be straight considered a heterosexual if you like trans genders or hairy masculine women if you're a man or feminine, you know, flamboyant men if you're a woman? So yeah, I'm that's gonna be sure interesting. Friday is gonna be a little. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be controversial. It's gonna be interesting. Um, yes. So that's what we're talking about on Friday, guys. Again, at three and seven, it's the real deal versus how you feel. And I'm out. You guys have a great rest of your day. You too. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.